one field the backdrop for this clash for Ivy League supremacy as this afternoon the second ranked Yale Bulldogs take on the 13th ranked Penn Quakers here in Philadelphia. Good afternoon everybody alongside George Corrigan, Joe Torty, glad you could join us. And George, this matchup, both of these teams started off a little bit slow to start the season, but they've really rounded into form. They're two of the top programs in the country. Yeah, without question, Joe, this is going to be an unbelievable Ivy League game and a game with the national implications as well as we look toward the playoffs. Penn is back, uh, coming off two huge wins against Princeton and Cornell. Yale defending national champions. It's a beautiful day here in Philadelphia. You know, 70 degrees, so it should be an outstanding ball game today, Joe. We'll turn our attention to the face-off X, where a pair of transfer Fogos have really made their impact on the Ivy League. For Penn, Kyle Gallagher, 15th in the NCAA in face-off percentage at 61%. He is as good as anybody in the Ivy League, and he'll need to be as he's squaring off against T.D. Erlen, the top face-off guy in the Ivies. George, he's clicking at 78% on the season. Hanley goes back to work. Bull dodge. Look at Hanley go! Upstairs! <laughs> Sam Hanley equalizes at four. Here's Sessa. Working on Bond, and Sessa dives in and puts it past Junkin's ear hole for a 10-8 score in this one. Yale back to within two. Junkin able to come away with that long outlet into the cross of Rosner. Who gets leveled? Tevlin. Let's it rip, and a kick save made by Junkin. Here's Farrar in transition. Odd man rush for Penn. Farrar lets it rip, and a save made by Starr. Wow, Starr saw that all the way too. Defensive slides by Penn, but a man left open, and Junkin makes the save. Great save. Junkin lurching across the crease to deny Joseph Sessa. And Yale able to come away with it. Open man, shot, and a bouncing shot saved, trapped, and pinned. Jack Ty wow. can't believe it. What a save by Reed Great Junkin. Sweet. Dumps it off. Jump shot. Junkin able to get a hand on it. Morrill. Another feed. Another shot. And that one wide. Done a jealous right down Broadway, yeah. but missed wide. Great save by Reed on that previous shot, Joe. Fortunate they shot wide on the next one. There's no question about that. Yale's confidence starting to build, but so far Reed Junkin has been the difference in this game, along with Kyle Gallagher at face-off X. That shot well high. And this is what we've seen sometimes when Reed Junkin's been playing really well. It's been forcing opponents to try to pick individual yeah. sections of net, and that hasn't worked out. Really good comment, Joe. Except for that one. Jackson Morrill picks a great time for Yale to find his first goal of the game, finds the corner, and we're all square at 11. Boy, that's a pretty shot by Jackson Morrill. I don't know who called timeout here, but if it was Penn, where did they wait too long for that? That's just an incredible shot. You can't pick the corner any better than that. Going far down with 2.55 to go in regulation time we're heading down the home stretch 11 11 penn and yale at franklin field 255 to go in regulation time and we're all square at 11 between yale and penn joe torty and george corrigan here with you george and you take a look at the equalizer for jackson morrill doesn't get any prettier than this he gets a step on his man oh my god that shot is unbelievable <laughs> i mean it's painting literally painting the top corner and uh he, got, he beat him on the high side and, and took his time and put the ball right where he wanted it. Morrill's 14th goal of the season. Probably the biggest face-off in Penn lacrosse in the last five or ten years is right now, Joe. You, you're up three goals. Now all of a sudden you're in a war and you're in a tie ball game. Every face-off becomes just that much more important for the next couple of minutes here at Penn. Yale started off this season with an overtime loss to Villanova, has not lost since. Penn started out 0-3. They have not lost since. This is a battle for first place in the Ivy League. Kyle Gallagher versus T.D. Erlin at faceoff X. Gallagher has it on the ground, pushed it ahead, and Yale's able to come away with it. Boy, Kyler had the win, and he couldn't get control of the ball, but he won the draw. That is a huge possession for Yale. And they've got the ball again. They've got a full shot clock. They can afford to be patient, afford to be selective. 
Brandau going to work. Noah Lehman on him. Tie into double digits in the shot column, has one goal. Tried to pass inside, it looked like. Farrar thought he scooped it away. No, sir. Farrar had that ball, too. And confusion. And Gaudet able to find some space and find the back of the net. Yale's back in front, 12-11. Penn didn't know who to cover. Yeah. There was a miscommunication there, clearly, and Gaudette made them pay his third of the game. Then a loose ball, a slightly unsettled situation. Gaudette steps under, catches it cleanly, and he's, the guy is lethal when he catches it inside. You know, unfortunately for Penn, they had the ball twice that time, Joe. They had a face-off win. And Farrar had that ball in his stick for half. If he catches it with that kind of speed, he goes right out the, you know, straight up the field. It's the truth. Now Penn playing from behind. 2.05 to go in regulation. I think Erlen's got it. I think he's doing that thing where he wants to find his spot. Oops. Tried to go, and now is able to come away with it. Emerge from the pile. Go heavy. That's a massive win by T.D. Erlen. Well, Yale has all the momentum in the world right now, Joe. And they've got 65 on the shot clock with probably 90 seconds to go. So they're going to have to let one go, and Penn will get a possession, hopefully, if they can scoop the ball off the carpet. They've led by as many as three, the Penn Quakers, in this second half. Yale ahead by one at 12-11. Morrill, who scored the equalizer, finds Ty. Ty's going to take a run. Timeout. Kind of expected that coming from Yale. One oh seven to go in regulation, 35 seconds to go on the shot clock. This is a massive possession for both of these teams. Doesn't get any bigger, Penn and the national champs. So with 107 left, George, if you're on the Penn defensive side there, what are you looking at in that huddle? What, what are you trying to highlight on Yale's side? Yeah, I mean, I think you've got two thoughts here. One is to go super aggressive, play lockdown, and try to force a turnover. That's a high risk, high return solution. Two is you say, look, there's only 35 seconds left on the shot clock, but 107 in the game, that gives you at least 30 seconds if you can cause them to shoot and get the ball back. You know, knowing Mike Murphy, who's, who's really a smart defender, I've played with him and against him many times, I don't see him going hyper-aggressive here, but it would be a strategy to play full lockdown and try to take the ball away from the ball carry and cut off the adjacent passes. On the other side, it's Andy Shea and Yale. Andy Shea saying earlier this week that he still doesn't feel like the Bulldogs have played a complete game or their best lacrosse. They've played pretty well here today. And obviously they're just a little away from surviving Penn. It's a big possession that they've got right in front of them here. I think you're going to see either Jackson Morrill come out with a ball who's you know probably their smartest guy and, and maybe one of the smarter players in, in all of NCAA lacrosse. Or maybe Sasa, the guy is so fast and so quick that if Penn tries to play hyper-aggressive, it's very hard to catch him with a change of direction. So I'll be curious to see who's going to bring the ball in for Yale and how heavy Penn's going to go. The ball's going to come in at Yale's offensive right side, Penn's defensive left side, right at goal line extended, just along the 10-yard the line here. So Penn does not look like they're coming out aggressive just yet. See Mark Ivanchek and Jackson Morrill standing next to each other. That's going to be the matchup, top left corner of your screen. So Penn's going to play just regular defense. Tyler Dunn's on the ball, so it's a short stick covering. Last minute of play and regular Ryan Tevlin walking back towards the midfield stripe. Expect this offense to begin at about 15. If there's an offense, it's going to begin. All right, here they go. Tevlin 
lulling Dunn to sleep a little bit on that one. Five seconds. Jump shot, misses wide, and two seconds to shoot for Yale. And we'll see if they even try anything He's here. They won't. He's just going to dump it, yeah. So with 32 seconds left, the Quakers looking for an equalizer. Yale leading 12-11. Here's that Yale ride. We'll see if that burns some time. Dunn looking for space. Cuts back inside. He's got to get the ball moving here. They're chewing up too much time trying to clear it. Dunn slammed on the brakes. He got through, though. 14 to go. Wing attack. Goldner. It's going to come down to one shot. Five seconds. Goldner. Lully gives it up. Dunn again. He go finds the back of the net with one second left. Tyler Dunn equalizes. What a goal. And that's a goal, by the way, Joe. I hope they don't try to take it away with zeros on the clock. That ball was in the goal. There's no doubt about it. There was one second left when Dunn found the back of the cage, and Tyler Dunn pulls Penn back to even. A lot of patience here. Tyler steps down, turns and fires. Unbelievable. <laughs> Tyler Dunn pulls Penn back and snatches a tie away from the jaws of defeat. Overtime is coming your way next. Penn and Yale at Franklin Field. Don't go anywhere. <laughs>